Hello friends and welcome to Career Talk. I am Suran Sharma, your host and agile consultant based in Netherlands. And we have a special guest today, Vinay Babu, an agile coach and a project manager. So today he is uh, here to guide us through real life project management scenario based questions. So this is going to be a series. So stay with us. We will have part one, part two, and part three in future. And before we dive in, if you find this info helpful and want to support us, give that like button and hit subscribe so you don't miss our future episodes and uh, different sessions. All right, so let's get started. Hello, Vinay. Thank you for being with us today, Vinay. Hi, Sunan. Hi, Sunan. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, Career Talks is uh, my, I would say Career Talk itself, my old friend. <laughs> it's the association with you and Career Talks. Yes. And thanks for the opportunity. I'm always eager to share back with the community. And uh, this time, uh, one of my uh, favorite uh, topics on project manager. Uh, let's see how it goes. I'm, I'm more than happy to share sure, my sure. experience. Yeah. So, Vina, these questions we have uh, captured, gathered from a lot of different uh, people with, from our WhatsApp group. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, we'll uh, love to see your insight uh, that how you're going to explain. Okay. So, if you allow, shall we start? Yes, yes. Please go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So, the very first scenario is, and I think uh, this is again very common one. So, let's assume that uh, you as a project manager taking from the previous manager, right? And this particular project is not in a good shape. So you have missed some milestones and you have uh, unhappy stakeholders. So how would you assess the situation and initiate a project recovery plan? So that's the question for today, uh, Vinay. I think uh, this is a fantastic question. In most of the cases, that is the situation, right? When we join a, a new project as a project manager, uh, most of the times project are already kicked off and uh, you will be in a situation to you know, take over that project. Uh, that is a typical case. And if you are not so, you are a little bit lucky. Like if you are starting from the scratch and you are on a sweet spot and you will take it according to your pace and you know your uh, planning and all, right? You'll have a little bit more confidence. That is another best case. And the case what you are referring, it is a usually a the regular case, okay? So for this, like, you know, I have been part a couple of times in this situation, especially with my previous organization. So what you can do is like, you know, take some time to understand what is the current state of the project, okay? You, uh, you know, uh, gather information as much as possible, look for the repository, look for the places, the like confluence page or document, project uh, document all, okay? Like, you know, the previous uh, project manager, he must be documenting something, right? So look at those sources, you look at for your, you know, uh, sources of information and try to spend more time, how much ever you spend more time on the, the already existing resources that really matters a lot. And obviously, uh, you know, to to uh, gain some in, insights and to gauge the current situation, you, you you will read the documents, you will look at the resources, and you need, uh, you know, a right set of people to talk. Meaning that you identify your key stakeholders, who are your key stakeholders, and uh, with the resources, what you have got, and uh, you when you read those documents, you will try to get some. Uh, insights about the current state of the project like you know as you mentioned in your question like uh, we have missed the mild milestones okay there are unhappy stakeholders uh, how what what kind of milestones we have uh, what are that particular or specific milestone we have missed and uh, what is the impact on the project and uh, as a project manager you have a lot of information right you know all our uh, the project plans, the schedule management plan, and you know, our cost plan, everything. If you re look at those, uh, you know, the the information, you try to gauge the current situation of the project. And based on the identified key stakeholders, you look at those who are those key stakeholders. Okay, what is their role? Uh, internal, external, you know, uh, what is that uh, engagement with the team they have? Like, you know, if you look at the project, you have already team is working on the project, existing team members, you have you have to spend quality time with them, uh, you know, trying to understand their point of view, right? Most of the times in practical, I've seen, right, the diff document and uh, you know, tools are talking one thing and our, our people or project team members are talking one thing, right? There is a gap. 
okay to understand the gap you have to read it and you have to spend time with your project team then only you will understand what is that barrier or you know potential difference between the uh, information captured and information there with the people so with these kind of discussions you will understand you speak a lot you spend a lot of time to look at the resources looking at the uh, stakeholders talking to the project members all these things will help you to you know create some blueprint some picture in your mind and as a project manager it is very essential to know it okay uh, uh, like it's easy to say that we have missed the milestone okay we have missed some x milestone or y y milestone but uh, why did you miss it what is the impact on the project who are the key persons are impacted with that and uh, with whom we could have done a little bit better and what is the root cause of that uh, missing that milestone like you know uh, for example uh, delivering uh, uh, like if you taken a software example uh, delivering the user interface or blueprint it was the first milestone and we have missed our team as project team has missed that milestone so you know that they have missed it but what is the root cause of missing it is there any gap in the requirement uh, you know clarification what kind of uh, reason uh, that uh, contributed to miss that milestone all this information you need to spend time and you need to talk to people and uh, based on the uh, information you got from the uh, tools the resources from the stakeholders from the project team okay what kind of uh, obviously this kind of risk has been already discussed as a part of project plan if you have risk discuss as a part of a, a risk assessment and risk mitigation plan obviously you should ha have some risk mitigation plan established already so according to that uh, already uh, are we you know uh, can we act according to the risk mitigation plan identified in the planning uh, stage all these things you, you need to uh, con consciously put an effort it's not that easy and again it's not that uh, uh, you're spending a couple of hours or a couple of days on documentation you will get overall picture or uh, one or two calls with the project team or one or two calls with the customer uh, you know it, it, you are good to go you need to spend more time as we like you know when when you climb the ladder for example after one step uh, you will get a little bit more visibility after climbing five step you will get a little bit more visibility as simple as that while accessing while looking at the tools while talking at the people you'll get more visibility that gives you know a little bit of information on uh, what exactly the ground situation what is the gap and based on the situation as a project manager you can come up with the counter measurements right as a project manager your prime responsibility to bring back the project on the track like if you are missing the milestones okay now what is the next step uh, now what is the next milestone and for this meeting the uh, first milestone what we can do and uh, subsequently uh, and uh, while working on this first milestone you are you are seeing a uh, second milestone is also on the uh, road map it is coming near so how to balance if at all required go back to the customer renegotiate the you know uh, delivery timelines if at all demands the situation again it depends on the situation what we dealing in, in my experience i think a uh, couple of times uh, i had to go back to the customer especially this kind of projects when i took over um, i realized that uh, whatever end date we have communicated it is not possible to make it i got that information by reading the uh, no existing uh, uh you no know, information in the in the project plans and everywhere and by talking to people i i clearly got that information so as soon as i got that i have established a you know uh, you know uh, and a negotiation plan with the customer okay which see all this process your proactiveness is more important than the, your reaction so everybody will react but staying proactive is ahead of the game is the key here okay but here you cannot be uh, react to uh, proactive because you are you are entered into the later part of the game but obviously you have to be in reactive mode during that you keep your uh, communication as open as possible you you keep informed your key stakeholders including your project team okay uh, all the metrics uh, the 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 you know cost variance schedule variance everything uh, you have to be very sure and uh, and, my, and and one more important element here is the milestones miss 
of course uh, it yielded some uh, what you call uh, kind of a damage to the project already happened but at the same time uh, as a new project uh, manager when you step in on one side you will understand what is happening and why it is happened another side you have to be stay connected with the team and keep them motivated right so uh, whatever happened is happened but uh, you should not carry that momentum rather you need to convert that uh, uh, that thing to you know opposite direction and start constructively like you know obviously these kind of things will demotivate the project team but as a as a project manager uh, again you need to be with the team and uh, you have to be uh, deal the uh, situation with your emotional intelligence as well rather uh, uh, on top of what you are uh, already doing so that's that's my approach that's what uh, uh, i have did uh, in the past i don't say that uh, i have uh, you know turned down the uh, project uh, in uh, you know two weeks uh, that's very Uh, very vague statement if somebody is claiming uh, we need to approach them how do you have done but it takes some time and and there is a difference see this kind of situation very uh, is different between i worked in both product based company and service based company okay the situation is uh, different in different set a set of uh, environment in product based company you have little bit uh, uh, cushion right because the the the, the customers are you uh, know key stakeholders are internal but in service based company it's a rather way when you have external uh, uh, customers and stakeholders uh, you have to be little bit more cautious and proactive there so yeah so in, uh, it depends on your situation and type of environment but lot of ground work need to be done yeah hope that 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 gives little bit insights on the situation so it's a tricky situation yeah that's right so thank bina for that elaborated uh... answer uh, so if i have to just summarize uh, so basically as a project manager first you have to assess your current situation so you do the analysis of your current status of the project where we are like with respect to our different milestones and then you have to identify and document uh, what are the issues and challenges which we are facing and uh, after that we have to work on the root cause analysis of our problem right uh, while doing this we will come across two things that will be the revised project scope the revised mm. project schedule because of course we have missed the timeline so we have to update the our project timelines with some realistic deadlines now yes. because yes. the problem is already has been done and of course we have to identify uh, any potential bottlenecks and all those things uh, while doing that and uh, as you also mentioned that sometimes what happen that people even don't recognize that there is a problem Problem. they yeah. they are they are always in a denying mode that okay uh, we have something has been done so the trust of the stakeholders been lost so yes. to gain that trust come up with some realistic approach realistic plan uh, make your communication plan more uh, uh, more elaborated you know uh, involve your stakeholders more you know your day to day work so they will get to know that okay, what's happening what is not happening give them a proper regular project status updates different reports whatever do that right yes. and most yes. importantly address their concerns and feedback that okay why this been done or uh, this can be improved right so all those yes. things uh, i think uh, uh, we have to work on and of course we are not touched on the budget and the financial plan because we will uh, going to have a multiple questions on that in upcoming uh, yeah yes. session yes. so yes. i think yeah i think we have covered everything um, yeah uh, sometimes what happen their team is not that much sufficient uh, they are into uh, initial stages so uh, sometimes they also struggle right so training and development can be also incorporated in uh, those kind of uh, your recovery plan i'm sure like that will be there but still if you have missed something and of course uh, different kpis are there as you mentioned so we have right. to again uh, monitor them regularly basis and of course uh, lesson learn uh, what is the lesson learn so that we should not uh, do the same mistake in upcoming projects or different projects right so yes. very important yes. to uh, document all the lessons runs uh, from whatever we have uh, from our mistakes yes. yeah I, I think I, uh, yeah 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 this is a journey again and every yeah. point of time um, one side you have customer of course at the end of the day he is paying for us uh, for the uh, project and all and other side we have project team so staying with the project team connected is very much essential and uh, communicate 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 okay and 
there are few principles right in theory it looks uh, uh, very good like you know deliver bad news as early as possible and uh, good news you can delay as uh, as much as possible so this kind of uh, logical thinking should be there right so like you know uh, especially with the teams right Uh, especially when you take over as a new project manager uh, team will uh, will not openly readily come and again okay uh, you have come uh, and we have to, we have to proactively share something it takes some time to build that trust and you know uh, relationship with them that is very much at the end of the, uh, uh, that is very much critical at the end of the day we have to accept one principle uh, neither customer will directly build his own product or neither project manager will be build it it's at the end of the team will build it okay you have to be intact with them and communicate the impact of their deliverables on the organization on the project and take them take their buy in like you know you know milestones are missed okay what is that uh, uh, income impact on the you know uh, organization or the project or program when you come from this angle from the business side of view because for, with the project team the business communication will happen with you only right you have the great visibility about the how much variance is there how much uh, uh, we are behind the schedule how much cost overrun and what kind of critical milestones uh, we missed what is the impact on the customer uh, you know satisfaction and all you have to be very vocal about these these uh, when we discuss with the team and team plays very important role and i agree with the lessons learned part and uh, readjusting your uh, you know scope and plans yeah those are the natural phenomena once you identify the root cause and uh, you know time to tend to discuss a solution what can be done as a solution then this these are the next uh, subsequent steps yeah yeah okay yeah thank you uh, vina i think we have discussed a lot on this so yeah yeah, yeah. thank you okay so the next one is like how do you uh, prioritize your project requirement you know uh, especially when you have a very limited budget so if you can provide some example from your past experience that budget prioritization how you have done that that will be great so again uh, like you know this is the one more common uh, phenomena we can say like you know especially when we when we work in service based companies right um, you have a huge competition no matter uh, how what you call robust your plan you know how uh, in terms of your bidding and all you obviously you have a lot of competition right uh, so when when this situation arises uh, when you have a very limited budget okay you need to discuss about the uh what customer is looking for obviously with that limited budget the customer say it comes up with some you know 10 or 20 requirement uh, uh, uh i want all these things within this budget and within this uh, you know time frame and all okay so as a project team you cannot deny that obviously okay you and you you have to accept the challenge and move forward how you can move forward we need to uh, with our project team we need to do some Uh, requirement evaluation okay okay uh, uh, what is the skill set required for that uh, is everything is clear okay the scope part and all um, you know like you know uh, that very fixed fixed scope we have or sometimes the customer is uh, expected to come up with some few more requirements what is that uh, agreement between the uh, you know uh, in the project charter what we have drafted and cost uh, doing cost based analysis like if you pick some particular uh, features right in that limited budget limited time let's say team has taken out of 10 requirements they have picked some four five requirements okay uh, obviously based on the you know need and priority and all they they uh, we need to do some cost benefit analysis we need to look at the opportunity cost what we are losing let's say they have taken five uh, 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 you know Uh, uh, requirements and other five uh, uh, they have not uh, taken what is that opportunity cost they lost okay so these kind of uh, uh, things what is that risk we are uh, uh, anticipating by taking this five uh, requirement okay uh, uh, based on the uh, prioritization matrix based on the you know situation when we take that we need to first of all i remember one time that we didn't had that um, expertise with us 
okay uh, yes we have got clear cut uh, information uh, on yes on these five uh, requirements we need to work to within this uh, two months or one month of time frame but at that time we didn't have that uh, skill set okay so these are the again the risk again so with that risk uh, how did we mitigate and all we have you know onboarded uh, since it is shared services and all we borrowed uh, you know resource there and uh, uh, we have done it okay and we need to do some trade off with the customer obviously uh, it is one, uh, one, it is clear that uh, everything cannot be managed within that budget and we have to be very open about that thing with the customer and we have to do some trade off with them okay so uh, by the way of uh, planning by uh, you know wvs after doing wvs and all we are uh, as per our experience as per our projections we are uh, saying uh, like you know we'll take uh, six weeks of time to do this thing okay uh, are we good with that we will start off with this and uh, our goal is to minimum to deliver this thing and on top of that we can we'll see how it goes this kind of trade offs has to be done okay which is the customer if you are not doing it he he or she that customer will assume you will deliver everything that that, that uh, open communication is really important if you are not doing it you are at risk right and whatever uh, uh, you know these things you have to uh, involve both project team and discuss with uh, with the team and whatever team is saying uh, we need to be very vocal and communicate to our uh, stakeholders especially the customer okay and most of the time if you see look at the those 10 requirements you'll trying to get some pattern out of those requirements or some core functionality of that requirement okay once you get that uh, pattern or uh, core functionality you can um, you know start focusing on that which is very critical for customer you can you can say that to the customer with our whatever analysis these are the core functionality is required this is the pattern we are looking for it and uh, of course our main focus is to deliver this thing and on top of that we will look at the other uh, you know uh, additional uh, enhancement like xyz requirements or the additional en enhancements or what you are talking about so that can be done but our main focus will be on this and this additional enhancement can be a stretch goal kind of thing so these kind of trade offs need to be done to do the trade off first we need to do some analysis among yeah. ourselves right yeah. if you are not uh, having enough clarity on what are the requirements and uh, how you are going to you know deliver those the thing like you know doing some blueprint or some mvp or whatever it may be if you are not uh, having that uh, the capability and the skill set with you and it goes on task okay so uh, uh, you know in my uh, one of the project what it did uh, when we, we realized that we don't have that capability or the skill set we borrowed resource for uh, uh, for a, a period of time like uh, two months and we we could able to you know again uh, do some trade off obviously it's it's a win win for customer and for us okay we don't want to lose the opportunity with whatever limited uh, 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 you know um, uh, budget what we have but i i i can confidently say one thing if you talk about core functionality it talk you it talk about that you know uh, pattern what the team is going to work and if you deliver it by delivering it only you will get that cushion of additional time okay they have developed the crucial part for us and they take they, they are going to take a couple of weeks more for delivering the uh, the enhancement or uh, other uh, second priority things so establishing that uh, uh, expectations and doing trade off is very much crucial and uh, being a project owner a project manager it is your responsibility to uh, sit with the team spend time do some analysis come up with these recommendations come up with this proposal and same time you need to communicate and discuss with the uh, customer to have some common agreement absolutely so if i have to summarize that first we have to identify the critical requirement so we have to see that which requirements are absolutely important uh, for the project success so these are like kind of must have uh, requirements and uh, these requirements uh, must align with our project objectives and post that we'll assess uh, each requirement that how these requirements is going to align with our project goal and uh, you know, as you mentioned that then stakeholder involvement is most important because 
you will have to engage a stakeholder to understand their priorities uh, their priorities you have to consider their inputs when we prioritize different requirements they have to understand their perspective right which one is critical and then we have to also uh, look for the dependencies right that okay which requirement you will have more dependency so if, if they have more interrelated dependencies that of course it will be very challenging to work on those kind of requirements and as you mentioned the cost benefit analysis right so we have to evaluate the cost versus the benefit of each requirement so we have to focus on the requirement that deliver the most value related to that particular cost right related to the cost right. so so this will definitely going to help us to ensure that the budget is allocated uh, efficiently and effectively and of course uh, uh, as you mentioned about uh, customer and user impact so we have to also see that which requirement is going to Im yeah. create more impact on the end user or the customer right so we have to also right. prioritize those requirements that will significantly enhance the user experience or that can uh, meet the critical user needs so those are the i think few important points and uh, the last one is i think uh, uh, which is there is a mvp a minimal viable product so we have to identify the minimum set of features that constitute a viable product right so these are the i think the important uh, must kind of features that we we implement that will allow the project to deliver the value so i think uh, these all are the points which you have covered right 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 yeah and okay. that, that mvp part is very critical here is yeah. that is the, the buy in uh, factor for again see whatever limited budget if you can do that and that itself speaks about your capability of delivering the rest of the stuff so uh, you need not to put uh, much more efforts to convince the customer that you know uh, uh, we need uh, this amount of time that amount of time uh, you know uh, amount of time automatically customer understands okay they have worked on this period of time within this uh, limited time and budget and it's time for them to work on enhancement let's go ahead and give something like that to bring that confidence this mvp is more important here correct correct so let me uh, also just give you an example uh, i just made this example let's say if you have to just create a let's say a e-commerce e platform for example so in that mm. let's say we have uh, uh, online ordering system we have payment gateway integration we have customer account and profiles we have let's say real time inventory tracking uh, let's say we have some mobile app compatibility and then let's say we have some uh, dashboard kind of so these are let's say our uh so many requirements right so in this uh for me the critical requirement might be that online ordering system and the payment gateway integration because yeah. they are directly yes. contribute to the primary goal of uh, enabling the customer to make purchase online so okay. that may be uh my like a must kind of requirement and then we have like customer accounts and profile right that is again yeah. a crucial for building a customer relationship profile and all those things but for yeah. me maybe that mobile app uh compatibility or that uh dashboards may not be that much important so that may be i will put it in a you know upcoming uh spends or uh, yes. in, in, the, in the future right so yes. yeah i think uh thanks when i think we are good for uh the uh, discussion uh let's move on if you allow yeah yeah sure okay okay so again uh, this is on uh, budget so let's say when we uh faced with with budget constraint right so how do you decide between uh, investing in additional resource or maybe uh, buying some new tools or some different technology right that any any kind of solution that can help you in achieving your project objectives so if you can also give some kind of uh, example that how these decisions has been made yeah so basically uh, uh, we need to uh, uh, analyze the situation um, like you know for both you need some kind of investment for the uh, additional resource and for the technology right mm -hmm. you need to think about a long shot solution rather than quick solution here okay see sometimes you may think you know borrowing an additional resource for a limited amount of time will solve this solution in fact i was covering in one of our previous question okay if it is a limited application limited time that's fine but you need to think about uh, our project chart the projects they are been uh, since team work on day by day the complexities will uh, surfaces it is not that you know 
uh, it's not that construction project right as a blueprint you structure it and you will build it you you know pretty much about the outcome right but here uh, you have to dig in like you know it's like a gold digging mining digging right you don't know sometimes you'll get solid rock or sometimes you'll get you know soil and you can if it's soil teams will dig in and will they'll search for the the gold or something like that so what i'm trying to say here is uh, we need to be very careful about the approach here first of all we need to do some kind of analysis like if i uh, you know uh, bring some you know, sme or uh, that resource for uh, two months of time what is the cost and uh, what is that risk we are getting here okay same time we need to look up look about that automation or you know some technology buying some some technology uh, 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 then that will solve the situation obviously generic on general uh, terms buying something some technology will obviously little bit more when more when compared to the uh, bringing some resource but again this is a very typical situation where you have to be very cautious about it you know as i said bringing some person and utilizing him from two two months uh, if there is some risk involved like you know dip fully depend on that resource like if he is going for a, if he fell sick or if he is going for some vacation or if something uh, complex thing has occurred whatever we anticipated it is beyond that game that time uh, we are on task so this kind of uh, analysis and uh, uh, you know groundwork need to be done okay and bringing this technology also uh, if, if you see that technology point of view if you want to use some technology of course it is a big um, uh, spending there but uh, it 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 can be utilized for multiple projects okay uh, with the same uh, technology same tool okay and you can uh, uh, you know you kind of have a option of uh, getting that budget from that budget, that project this project and and all okay again depending upon the situation okay you need to think all these combinations probability and uh, you know all these combinations and take a wise decision like you know, here also you need to think about the opportunity cost if i go with sme what is that risk we are taking and what is that we are losing if you are go with technology what is that again risk and what is that we are losing that that risk evaluation we need to do it and also as i said in the beginning we have to think in in terms of very long perspective right you know uh, in, in one of my project uh, especially with the uh, what you call devops requirement we simply thought uh, okay we have a big release uh right uh, quarterly release there was a quarterly release for that uh, from the beginning or itself we, if we involve devops the risk is little bit uh, less we, this part as a came as a part of risk discussion what could be the risk uh, not beating the deadline okay so what we can do there so you can bring either resource or some uh, you know uh, technology a dev technology something like that so at that time we thought about okay cost and all we need to communicate everybody we need to take buy in as all uh, process process is there instead of that anyhow we have resource pool there we pull one resource there that solves my purpose, uh, purpose. yes it solved my purpose for temporary for that release only but again it became a uh, you know no uh, non uh, issue and you know continuous issue for us so in that scenario i would have gone for the technology help and though it is a little bit more expensive but in long shot it has uh, you know uh, saved or reduce the dependency on that particular resource so depending on that particular resource is huge risk for the project as i said if it goes for a you know, couple of days or if it leaves or if it falls sick and all those things we need to think about it and also what your project team is suggesting most of the time you know what will happen right um, we will ignore the feedback or we will ignore the inputs from the project team Uh, that that is one of the biggest uh, mistake most of the people will do will tend to ignore what are the inputs given by the uh, uh, you know the project team okay sometimes if they are giving correct yes we can take it if they don't give it correct or if they don't have that uh, maturity or visibility or knowledge it is your responsibility to 
give that information background information or whatever that necessary information but instead of that if you don't do anything straight away if you go that obviously you don't have buy in from the project team itself for that when you don't have the buy in from the project team and who who is going to work on it and who is going to leverage it and who is going to you know uh, deliver it or work on it right so this is another angle of it like you know discussing with the project team and taking their uh, uh, you know inputs into the uh, uh, consideration and also either this way or that way once the decision is taken decision is taken you should you cannot look back and you know, think about it okay as a project manager that's more very important point right uh, you know during the course of journey uh, some some project team some t- senior team in the project uh, may say right we would have taken that decision if you would have taken that technology help i think this is the world have handled easily this kind of things i'm sure you will hear it i'm sure about it you will hear it but uh, as a project manager you need to be uh, you know yes agreed to the certain point of time but this is not a point, uh, time to discuss about that let's do whatever we can do with the uh, whatever decision we have taken let's do with the sme or uh, devops but sometimes you know uh, tools will helps a lot that is my one of the lessons learned especially the scenario yeah. what i told but uh, yeah it, a lot of factors involved right uh, it is a very you know when you work in a very dynamic environment lot of factors fall into the picture as a project manager you have to be very proactive in finding those uh, unique point or unique uh, you know uh, decision points or factors and play according with that okay and as i said no solution is uh, perfect fit for all the scenarios right but any which way as a project manager you should have this attitude of chasing things right or you, you, see as a project manager you might not have answer for all the things but with your attitude with your chasing things with your you know communication uh, being honest uh, transparent i know these words are niche and catchy words but as a project manager uh, this phrase plays a lot because see uh, i am experienced for for you know, close to 14 years it doesn't mean that on earth i have known all the problems and i have a solution for everything but i have that intent of chasing things and you know uh, you know catching the right stakeholders and communicating being honest and these kind of elements are very crucial to whatever i said true oh, true okay so uh, if i have to summarize uh, the very first thing is we have to see the current team whether they have the necessary skills and capacity to meet these requirements with the existing resources so that's the very first thing second thing is like we have to evaluate the technology requirements as you mentioned so we have to assess whether this uh, advanced technology solution which we are uh, intend to take is going to help us in achieving the project objectives or not right yes. and whether we can uh, leverage the existing technologies effectively or not or if the new technology is very important you uh, know in, in order to be successful right so that's the second yeah. point the third point is you mentioned about the i think about the time constraints so we have to also see if there is a tight deadline that required a rapid solution i think in those scenario investing in additional skilled resource might be more effective in a short term and uh, you also mentioned about a long term and a short term impact right so we have to consider the long term impact of that particular decision so investing in any advanced tool or technology may provide a sustainable benefit over the period of time mm. but this additional resource might address our immediate need so that's something yes. that's a decision which we have to see mm. and uh, yeah of course the cost benefit analysis so we have to conduct a cost benefit analysis for both the options we have to evaluate the potential uh, roi return on investment for that uh, specific mm-hmm. solution technology compare to the cost of hiring the additional resource i think and as right. you also mentioned about uh, the devops thing right so uh, let's say in a in a, in a scenario where uh, if the project is facing some immediate time constraint and the critical need has to be there to catch up with the schedule so maybe the investing in the additional resource might be suitable yes. for short term but if the project is a part of let's say larger program or has a focus on a long term efficiency right yeah. and i think in that scenarios investing in any tools or uh, technology definitely going to benefit uh, 
not only that specific project but different other project as well right so yeah right. uh right. i think we have covered uh all the things uh thanks uh for that okay uh let's move on shall we yeah yeah okay so uh the other one is regarding uh different tools or matrices which you use to track your budget performance so how do you monitor and report uh budget progress to different stakeholders uh in in the entire uh, project life cycle when so so see as for a project manager uh, um, this is again a very critical aspect okay if you look at the our project uh, life cycle so the initiation uh, planning executing monitoring controlling and closing okay at each each stage you have to communicate something to your stakeholders in the form of metrics right and uh, if you see our you know um, the metrics part uh, like you know earned value management uh, schedule variance cost variance these are the pretty generic uh, uh, you know uh, stuff we will typically focus on but um, staying on top of them like you know uh, for example you keep all the uh, alerts kind of things if let's say we are using microsoft uh, project plan or you know any other tool you are you are using you obviously keep some alerts like whenever that uh, crossing some uh, point of uh, you know the metric you will see the uh, alert and also you will be closely monitoring on, on day in day out of that okay you need to establish a baseline and after that establishing ba baseline if you going uh, either direction you will keep uh, some alert that alert will uh, you know uh, uh, will pop up to you and uh, you will uh, take a counter action on that and regular tracking okay though it is popping up uh, alerts or not you will regularly see the pattern where we are going how much we spent okay what is that uh, uh, planned uh, uh, you know time and actual time what is the planned cost and actual cost there is a variance how much that variance uh, should be you know if that variance is crossing certain uh, you know point obviously it it gives a alerts this kind of regular tracking should be there and this this uh, whatever uh, metrics are generated right uh, though it is manual or automated most of the time it is automated some some you you keep it as a manual thing so these things should be effectively communicated for everybody like you know for project team or for the customers or whoever key stakeholders but one thing i can say not every metric is important for everybody okay when i with the team i have to talk with the uh, metrics which are related for the team when i am with the status calls with the customer or with the program team i need to talk about the that respective metrics right so you have a different audience with different uh, requirements you need to play with your metrics uh, where you want me. to talk can you hear me yeah, yeah. i, I just you. i just lost you for a couple of seconds that's okay please go ahead sorry yeah so what i was saying is like you know all our uh, cost variance schedule variance you know cost performance index uh, you know budget at completion estimation at completion these are the typical parameters you have and these parameters are important for for people different different people okay for for the project team uh, you you when you talk with the project team when you are reviewing the project status you will talk about you know uh, how much uh, uh, we have pending or whatever that uh, target is coming how much we are over spending and how much uh, uh, delay we are running or that schedule variance you talk in terms of uh, uh, when you go to the stakeholders of the program team review how, how much cost you have spent till now as a part of the budget and how many left it out and for that left it out amount of uh, time and uh, uh, amount the the left over work can we manage or the project is uh, under uh, budget or over budget or under time uh, you know schedule or over schedule these are the important for the program team um, uh, you know who are taking the, the status and for the customers so these all these things are really important and in, in terms of uh, being transparent and creating some dashboards and uh, discussing them enough with the team a lot of times what will happen in my uh, experience uh, those metrics are the job of project manager 
and he will take care and he will talk to the respective program team or the customers those are the important for a team as well team also know need to know where we are what is our position is it need to is it time to step up or is it uh, you know time where we need to look at it uh, review it we, do we need any help or uh, are we any risk is uh, coming this kind of information to uh, should be uh, share with team as also so you have to be uh, transparent in both ways with the team project team and with the customer uh, uh, you know and we have to be very transparent and open and communicate as much as possible maybe a weekly call or you know bi weekly call depending upon the cadence we established and sometimes uh, most of the time once we establish cadence if something is going wrong or you know we are uh, over budget or uh, whatever some uh, you know um, escalation happened or you know some sls has been has been hit you need not to wait till the cadence uh, to communicate this bad news whenever it surfaces you communicate to everybody to the project team to the customer to everybody so that in the cadence the uh, call or the review meeting call nobody will be surprised and nobody will question you that you are waiting till this time to communicate to the host you deliver the information as early as possible you need not to wait for a, a call or a review meeting or and all and uh, as i said talk the language of the uh, people who are in front of you don't uh, talk all the metrics with everybody or work there right the other person what is important for him try to understand and gauge it and give that not everything and uh, uh, every uh, nobody will cares for everything uh, what's going in the project they will care only certain elements of it correct right. okay so uh, if you have to summarize uh, we discussed about the budget baseline so it's very important to establish a baseline budget at the beginning of the project so this yes. will uh, serve as a reference point for tracking and compare the actual expenses and then uh, we have something called evm which is earned value management so there we have uh, ev ac actual cost and a planned value so these are the three things which we can uh, uh, consider uh, during the evm and then we have uh, something called uh, different budget reports so uh we have to generate regular budget report that compare the actual expenditure versus the planned budget so this right. kind of report will uh, share with the stakeholders to understand so they should be very clear and then uh, periodically basis uh, i think we should also do something called variance uh, analysis so we conduct uh, variance analysis to identify and explain the difference between the planned and the actual expenditure so this basically help stakeholders to understand the reason for uh, budget deviation and then mm. you also talked about different uh, financial dashboards i would say so create financial dashboard that provide a visual representation yeah. of your budget performance so dashboard can uh, include uh, any charts or graphs that shows the budget allocation spending trends and the remaining fund right so that is again a important thing uh, other thing which i remember is yeah uh which we can add over here is like there are different tracking tools expense tracking tools so there are a lot yeah. of uh, uh, expenditures which has been done so we can have a dedicated expen uh, tracking tool or any any software that monitor the day to day expenses so these tools uh, can help to identify the spending patterns and definitely yeah. going to help in controlling the cost and uh, yeah uh, different kpis you mentioned about uh, uh, budget at completion bac and then we have cost performance index cpi so all those things uh, can be tracked apart from yeah. that important point uh, which i want to add is forecasting so yeah. Yeah. Uh, we can use different forecasting technique to predict the future budget performance based on the current trend so this will yeah. help in a proactive management and the early identification of potential issues that can happen in future right yeah. and in the last a uh, stakeholder communication is a key always so uh, always very open and transparent uh, about your budget uh, communicate with the stakeholders provide regular updates or on on your budget status and explain any deviation and uh, you know any any corrective action that is also required and uh, yeah i mean uh, and of course you can integrate your uh, risk management into budget monitoring so identify the potential risk that may impact the budget and uh, come up with your risk mitigation strategies i think so yes, yes, yes. i think uh, we have covered uh, everything over here yeah thank, 
Thanks, yeah, two sir. points. Yeah, yeah, two points on the. Uh, I want to little bit expand. I was little bit fast on um, corrective actions and action items. Yeah. See, as a project manager, when you see some deviation, it is clear cut to uh, understand that we have deviated certain amount of time or cost or whatever. Okay, in the in the status in the program status call or with the customer status call, not just you call out the deviation. to address the deviation what is that action item you are taking as a project manager and your team is taking about you need to be very vocal about it so that uh, they feel that okay this this variance is little uh, as a part and parcel of the game but most important thing is as a project manager you are acting upon that that is that is important for me that that is a gives you the confidence on your project you and your project team for the customer so that's for for most important point and other thing on the forecasting i mean i'm with this lot of ai is going on here and there i think you, you pretty soon we will see we will see the technology where you put some parameters uh, some deviations for the tool and it will generate that forecast it will give give the probability of failing or not meeting your deadlines Uh, pretty much uh, we will see in in the next 6 months or 1 year i am sure we will see with your deviations you put your deviations to that uh, uh, you know forecasting ai tool or something then it will give the probability of uh, success and failure for the project i think in fact i am closely working with one of the project where we are building some model for that okay like you know how that to project uh, uh, plan will look like what are the metrics and uh, what are the variations the boundary conditions we will say the upper boundary or lower boundary conditions based on the to boundary conditions applied with this all schedule various cost various and all your project success rate or failure rate it will, it will give it and based on that rate you can uh, be either confident or you take a counter action for that to you know bring that back into the success rate yeah okay great uh, thanks vinay okay let's move on so uh, how do you i mean this is like somewhat similar to the previous question but then how do you uh, incorporate your contingency planning in your budget allocation process you know because there are a lot of uh, unexpected cost which will be there uh, during your uh, project life cycle right so budget overrun can occur due to any unforeseen circumstances so how you cater uh, these kind of challenges as a project manager the the first and foremost important thing is in the in the uh, uh, planning itself and the risk of planning itself so you, you talk about the what are the potential risk and you will use that rome technique you will use resolved owned you know accepted the after you doing that you need to discuss about the contingency reserves most of the times uh, people uh, they they for name sake they'll discuss and they'll keep park some ball park some amount and they'll forget it off and also uh, as i said during the re, uh, planning the risk identification and the risk assessment and while we planning about the contingency reserve like some 10% or 20% based on the historical data we keep that allocation right you 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 most of the times we think that uh, that the job is done till that time but most important th uh, thing we forget is usually once that risk occurs what is that guidelines to use that how you you need to what are the what you called uh, procedures or what are the uh, situation what what time of that uh, that uh, no risk occurrence we need to pull that uh, um, uh, contingency reserves and uh, utilize in the project there should be some guidelines some some process to set up this thing we completely miss like in fact in one of my project uh, i was very early in the project also and uh, that too for a little bit of moderate project it's not small or big project before we completely ignore this part okay and what what happened uh, because of the uh, one of the uh, what you call vendor dependency that vendor uh, uh, was newly identified yes we have uh, taken that risk we have identified there is a new vendor if we do uh, you know uh, here and there wrong uh, we our project it at the risk that we have discussed identified we have assessed it and we have kept a part of contingency 
but you know once that risk occurred uh, uh, how to you know uh, put that into the uh, uh, like you know what is the contents is reserved you keep some funds okay not only keeping that funds like uh, how to uh, uh, in this case we need to immediately address the another uh, vendor or we need to think about what is the alternate solution and all so uh, for, we need to what i'm trying to say is we need to discuss very detailedly on utilization of the contingency reserves also it's not only identify or keep some park some uh, fund for it but also you think about the utilization or some set of some guidelines right and this uh, uh, thing need to be regularly like you know most of the times we establish risk register okay in the risk register it will be there and uh, in our cadence calls or in regular meetings we will uh, uh, track it or closely monitor it okay and uh, while uh, at certain point of time this risk has evolved this risk evolution and uh, risk uh, uh, you know surfacing thing should be again communicated to all the stakeholders if there is any delay that will have a cascading effect right so for example uh, within the project team the team has identified team has uh, known this uh, about the vendor thing uh, last week and uh, in this week uh, in the review meeting we are uh, communicating to the customer okay customer knows it the game but uh, he felt little bit uh, surprised rather than if you could have communicate communicated with the customer we could have got little bit uh, more buy in or more time to see the risk happens whenever the risk happens you have a two impact on the cost and the schedule okay typically cost you are maintaining with the contingency reserve we are good but how about the schedule obviously you you will be uh, risk at not delivering certain thing at the time right so this delivery thing obviously you need to uh, take buy in or communicate to the customer so this communication part plays a crucial role here you need to be very upfront in communicating it uh, to the customer and take some buy in with this you know also there should be again a change control process we need to document this all things uh, no documentation is really important and uh, uh, no this change control process also now that you know some delay is happening right that delay uh, should be uh, captured and we should be uh, communicating to the customer customer acknowledges it uh, and it is captured as a part of the change control process so what is the new change a new date of delivery and all these things should be there so level 1 level 2 level 3 or at the each level of discussion uh, if you have uh, you know discuss in detail during the planning itself that much uh, um, you know uh, what you call um, uh, that gives that indicates the preparedness of your uh, your team on the risk like if if nothing is happen nobody cares about this thing but if it happens everybody cares about this thing and if nothing is happen is your day if every if uh, unfortunately is happen if you don't discuss these things and you discuss all these things during that time uh, if you could have solved this thing in two weeks without this discussion it will take four weeks of time and that is the mantra here that's why you have to be here proactive here rather than reactive again here here you need to be proactive where you can be proactive you discuss all this uh, during the you uh, know risk identification risk assess- assessment uh, with this contingency uh, reserve i am telling you know sometimes uh, you know we park it but we forgot about the guidelines we forgot about the you know other steps that is very important and and um, more and, uh, in my experience you know i see telling all these things very easy but whenever it happens uh, it takes some guts to acknowledge it and it takes some you know <laughs> courage to deal with it as a project manager you are expected to do that wonderful okay so uh, let me summarize uh, the very first thing which we have to do is our risk assessment so we have to conduct a thorough risk assessment during our project planning phase initially right and we have to identify the potential risk and uncertainty mm-hmm. that could impact the project budget so we have to consider both internal and the external factor and the other important thing is now we have to quantify the risk so we have to quantify the risk so that we should know the impact of this particular risk in terms of cost so that is again an important thing uh, the other thing is 
the contingency types so basically we are having two types of contingencies uh, known unknown and mm -hmm. unknown unknown so risks yes. that are identified but are uncertain impact that is known unknown but then there are risks that may emerge during the project which we have even no idea when we starting the project so those are those are unknown unknowns right mm -hmm. so for these kind of uh, contingencies we have to come up with our uh, risk plan and uh, of course uh, as you mentioned about the scope change so we have to uh, we have to recognize the change in the project scope that can also contribute to, to the budget over and over the period of time so we have right. to include a buffer or contingency specifically for managing the uh, scope changes that's again important and in this entire thing we have to communicate with our stakeholders we have to clearly communicate uh, the existing and the purpose of this contingency reserve to the different stakeholders to the team so they have to understand that uh, this is not just like a uh, mm -hmm. fund but but is a strategic reason uh, it's, it's a basically uh, there for some purposeful reason right for some unforeseen mm -hmm. challenges so that's something which uh, people should uh, remember otherwise they take it for granted and of course mm -hmm. uh, we have to uh, do our regular uh, risk review so we have to uh, it's not like we just do the risk register and we have to just do it in the beginning phase, but throughout the project life cycle, we have to reassess and update the risk uh, mm -hmm. register as, as the project progress. And of course, the, the new risk will uh, come and emerge and we have to incorporate those risks. And again, we have to prioritize all those risks based on again uh, with, the, with the potential impact and the probability of occurrence of a risk. So all those things uh, we have to consider and you also mentioned about the change control process, right? So we have to integrate the contingency planning process into the change control uh, process, yes. right? So we have to assess the financial uh, implication of the proposed changes and we have to uh, find out, we have to determine whether this contingency reserve should be utilized or not. So all those things uh, come under the change control process. And of course, over the period of time, we have to reassess the contingency as and when the milestone has been reached. So right. yeah, those are the few things which you mentioned. I think uh, we covered everything, right? Uh, right. Right, the, the risk uh, tools, uh, right? Uh, you have to be keeping a close eye on it. And as I said, first. Yeah, nowadays a lot of uh, ELM um, uh, yeah, yes. I mean, uh, check tools are available, so you can do that. Okay, I think uh, we are done. This is a very elaborate session, Vine. So, <laughs> so thank you, Vine, for uh, being with us and uh, sharing your knowledge. And friends, if you enjoyed uh, today's uh, session content don't forget to like subscribe and stay tuned for more we will have more session with Vina in future so until next time take care thank you everyone thank you Vinay. thank you thank you Sinan. thank you for the opportunity and uh, thank you all for seeing this video and keep uh, contributing to this you know, forum thank you all thank you Vinay.